It's Jack Grisham from True Sounds of Liberty or wherever else you want to place me. Who else did you smoke weed with? <laughs> whatever i just like and no it's funny because it was backstage at a luther vandross concert so, yeah uh, now we're getting somewhere oh it's oh luther, let me tell you something did luther puff on it oh my bit? god no i love luther well i love luther he's gone now but uh but it was bad so i i went it was universal amphitheater and i was my seats i was right in the orchestra pit and I, it's like I love Luther and DeBarge opened up for him and it it, it was badass and it was right when uh, the uh, Never Too Much song came out and it was great and he was looking good he'd lost some weight and because Eddie Murphy had been giving him shit about liking chicken fried chicken and uh, he he came out towing a bunch he had a rope with a bunch of fried chicken buckets on it and he walks out in this bitchin' red sequin suit he goes fuck you Eddie Murphy and everyone laughed you know and then uh, <laughs> And then he launches into the Burt Bacharach tune, A House Is Not A Home. And he starts playing it, and it's a duet. And he walks into the orchestra pit. He walks right in front. I'm sitting here, and right here, but she's got her back to me, so I don't see. And Luther walks right down the aisle right here, and he hands the mic to Dionne Warwick. And she just stands up and starts wailing. It was fucking badass. Love it. Love it. What year was that? I don't know. I was still drinking, so... Yeah. I mean, I can't really get into the rest of the evening, too. It's it's a G-rated program. I'm pretty sure we're on a G-rated program. No, it's not G-rated. No. You need to unleash. Is it a hard R? Yeah, it's hard R. I mean, super hard it's R? Triple X. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Well, okay. whatever. We don't need to do all that. But let's just say that well, let's give some I was highlights. doing some dating. Dating. Oh, uh, I see. And it was... Uh, was there one woman or several women? Or There there was one. And... Uh, it was we were backstage at Universal Studios, okay. so we went inside the Psycho House. So the Psycho House is just boards. You get inside, and it's That's all like just facade, plywood, yeah. exactly. So we went in, and we're you know having fun inside the Psycho House, and then we went to Jaws and had some fun in Little Amityville, and then we went down to the Main Street, just just kind of <laughs> just fucked our way through Universal <laughs> Amphitheater. And once you're in, no one's questioning you. Like they're not like we were in the place, so there's no security bother. We never even saw security. Yeah, so they probably assume because once part you're in there, yeah, you're in there. Yeah, it's a trip back there. I've done that yeah. tour a few times. Okay, so imagine doing that tour at night with no <laughs> with no vehicles going on. It was it sounds great. like fun. Oh, it was a blast. Yeah, it was a blast. I mean, I did get punched in the face uh, by her boyfriend for it uh, afterwards, but oh, okay, but it so wasn't a hard was, punch. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> You've had worse, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he gave it his best shot. He gave it. Anyway, let's. T- we should talk about something nice. I don't think that's very nice. No, I think it's good. People want to hear that. Shit. Do they? Yeah. So, what do you think of the movie Psycho, by the way? Do you like it? I like it. It's good. That's I like fair. Alfred Hitchcock. And I'm bummed because his cinematographer used to live in. Uh, his cinematographer used to live in Huntington Harbor, and he's buried in Huntington Beach, right by my house. Really? So I would have liked to have talked to him. Yeah, I just used, I just wrote a script. Uh, the script I just finished, I'm getting ready to start production on, and I use a Hitchcock trick in this in the script. So yeah, I love Alfred Hitchcock. I used to watch him. I used to creep, creepy. Yeah, he's a he would have been he would have been canceled. He would have been Weinstein. He would have been put in a oh he was not whatever. A, yeah, he's, he's not yeah, a... blonde, young blonde. Yeah, yeah, blonde, blonde. <laughs> Anyway. They don't tell you that on the Backlot tour when you go nowadays. No. They just show you a little clip and yeah, that's about it. But you can read about it. You can read about him doing, you know, whatever. All right. Creeping on his blonde act. They all look the same. All right. So Tippy Hedren, Grace have, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Now I have my night reading, so I'll make sure to look into that. I'll look in. Yeah. Look in. <laughs> so wait, when did you have your last drink? Let's talk about that. 34 years ago. January 8th, 1989. Do you remember the night like it was yesterday? It was no big deal. It was uh, they were trying to keep they were trying to get me sober basically for that whole year, the year before that. Who's they? The band? My friends. Your friends? No, it's just my friend. Like my friends, friends were trying family. to get me to go. I personally, I I just didn't think I had a problem. You know, it just didn't. I wasn't doing anything that anybody else wasn't doing. It's like I wasn't hanging around with good people. It's not like I'm I'm at church hanging around and then afterwards saying, "Hey, you guys want to get some blow and rob a liquor store?" That's not <laughs> happening. And uh, I mean, the people that I was hanging with, they were all like me. And and so I, I used normal, to, right? Yeah, it's like I used to make this joke where 
you know, sometimes for an alcoholic, I think to even wake up, at least one of my type and the people I'm with, it's like a bunch of pigs in a sty. And all of a sudden, one of the pigs sticks his head up and goes, do you smell that? Do you smell that? It's like I'm incapable of smelling it because I'm hanging with you and your reflection is my reflection. You're blacking out. You're going to jail. You're sleeping with other people's girlfriends. You're getting in fights. You're doing this. So I'm looking at you. And so how is this behavior wrong? It's not. I mean, and that's those are the people that I was hanging out with. So so for somebody like that to even wake up and question their actions, you know, is is actually miraculous almost to even wake up and say, hey, there's there's a problem. <clears throat> it really is. So and, what, do you th- what do you think drove you to want to stop? I mean, do you think you just kind of it was time or I, to tell you the truth? Well, it, the woman I was married to at the time who later on died of a drug overdose, uh, she I was totally obsessed with her. It was actually pretty fun. I just loved her dearly. I, and uh, so we had gone to some meetings, you know, some 12 step meetings on and off or whatever. And, you know, just going and then leaving and not really staying because I don't really got a problem. And uh, so she decided that she was going to go into rehab. And so I said, and I'm not going, I got no money for rehab. I have no insurance. You know, I came, my family was poor. It's like, I didn't, I didn't have anything. So my only thing was, you're going to go to County. You're going to go to the County hospital. It's like, yeah, fuck that. They're not gonna let me out of here, you know, cause they had tried to put me in County before. And, uh, so I just told her, I said, look, I'll go to meetings. You go into rehab and I'll go into me. I'll go to meetings. Well, I had a restraining order on me cause I'm not supposed to see her. Because they had restrained me. And uh, and I, you know, whatever. If, it, look, if you don't got a restraining order, you never really loved them. Yeah, they you call it. Oh, that's a good line. Yeah, proof, is it? Because it yeah. doesn't go over well in a lot of places. But I proved my love by coming back. And yeah. uh, <laughs> she went into a she went into a treatment center. And oh I, I, I didn't. And I would sneak over in the morning. I'd go see her at the morning meeting at the treatment center. And then one more, about 13 days in, she decided she was going to leave. And she goes, you're out there. You're fucking all my friends. You're having a blast. And I wasn't because now I'm 13 days unsedated. And this is what I, where I started to really realize what the problem is. The problem was not when I had it in me. The problem was when I didn't have it in me. That's when I realized there was a problem because I needed to be sedated. You want me sedated. I mean, not now. But back then, it's like, you want me sedated. You don't want me coming to your house without a volume or two in me or whatever. It's like, you want me the edge off so you know something's not going to happen. It's going to be calm. We're going to bring him in. He's calm. We're going to take him out. He's calm, you know. Anyway, so 13 days in, she goes, you're (laughs) fucking all my friends. You're having a blast. And and I might have been fucking her friends, but but I was not having a blast. And uh, she ran off, and I went out to go after her. And I go to start my car, and my car won't start. So I call. This is early. And we're talking 8 a.m. This is early. This is already going on, right? And uh, anyway, I call AAA to come, and they tell me I'm out of the five-mile limit. And so I tell the guy, well, then call the police. And he's like, why? Why call the police? I go, because one way or another, my car is getting towed. Either you tow it, or I beat the fuck out of you, and they impound it. So call the police. That's what I told the guy, and the guy agreed to tow my car, and he towed it. And when when he got home, when I got home, I walked in the house, and the morning mail had come, and there was a, a warrant that came in the mail. It was a bench warrant, a three thousand dollar bench warrant for not appearing on a charge of uh, prowling under the influence of methamphetamine, <laughs> and um, and I didn't get wow. loaded. So the girl's gone. My car's ruined. I'm now an action figure without a vehicle. My car is ruined. The girl I was obsessed with is gone. I've got a warrant in the mail. My whole life's shit. And for some reason that day, I did not sedate myself. And I remember it being 9, 10 at night. And I think, fuck, it's 9, 10 and I'm still not high. And I've, I've been clean ever since then. I mean, all the way through. And she ended up relapsing and getting high. And like I said, ended up dying of a, a drug overdose. Whoa. It was a real bummer. And uh, her mom... Because of the, whatever, it doesn't matter. But her mom called me and asked me to be, and her mom hated me. And, uh, but because of doing what I do and doing what I did and stand true to myself and a path, her mom called me when she died and asked if I would be a pallbearer at the funeral. So it was, um, it was heavy. I still think about her all the time. 
I'm sure. It's hard. Did that well, bring us down? No, I need to bring us down. <clears throat> so how was it? How was it going back out on the road with the band being sober in the early days? How well, did you stay sober? Well, it was actually wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Here's what I did. It so seems like it's tough. No, it's it not even at all. It's like you don't give a shit. But uh, but I didn't know. Okay, so so when you go out and have a couple of drinks, like I'm a total geek. Like I, I'm a I'm not good at talking to people. I'm a wallflower. Like I just you know I. I walk into a nightclub. Have you ever shoplifted? Do you ever shoplift? You guys shoplift? Mm. Maybe not for a while. But <laughs> all right, listen. It's not so, as popular as it once was. Yeah, it used to be. A big, yeah. <laughs> now you just get away with. Now, now. you just walk out. There's you just walk out every with it. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, so now you walk out. They don't even do. Yeah. Anything. Fuck them. Out of nine hundred. So I used to shoplift, and so then when when I didn't when I'd go into a store and and not buy something. When I'd walk out, like my ass would be all tight, like I'd be all like stiff walking out, like they're watching me or something. You know, it's like I'd look at the manager like I didn't get what I wanted, you know, just to make acknowledge them because my ass would be so tight. So then when I stopped drinking and taking pills, I go out and my ass was tight. Like I didn't know what to do. Normally I have a cocktail in my hand. Yeah, I do with a cocktail. I'm drinking and pointing to you talking with it. Now I got nothing in me and uh, I'm fucking tight. I mean, just, you know, my ass is clenched up and I just stand there. I don't know what to do. So so I'm thinking, how the fuck am I going to get on stage like this? I can't play like this. I'm embarrassed, man. I don't want people. It's like blue velvet. You know, people pay to see me, but don't look at me. Look away. Look away while I'm doing this. And, uh, you know, uh, and maybe that's why I love punk rock so much, because the kids would be so going crazy that they're not paying attention to me. They're doing their own thing. Anyway. So I thought, what the fuck I'm going to do? And I, so I went to a hypnotist. I went to a hypnotist and I got hypnotized so I could relax and be on stage calmly. And what this guy did, and, and now I'm, I'm a hypnotist. I, I don't practice, but I, I, I can do it. And um, what he did is he put an anchor in me and he took me back to this show. He took me back to this great show. He goes, could you remember this show? And he took me back to the show when it was crazy and everything was just going wild. And so that was implanted, was anchored in me. And so now I can be totally terrified, totally whatever. But the minute I step on stage, I'm transported back to that show. And I am the man. And that's how it feels now. So, so I got hypnotized to deal with, you know, how am I going to play without something in me? Without a little something to take the edge off. Yeah, so now it's easy, right? Yeah, now it's I just walk flows. up and just like, what's up? I'm yep. terrified all the way into playing, but then I get up and, you know, and paranoid. I always think people are out to get me. Are so, they out to get you sometimes? I don't know. Maybe they are. But <laughs> but but it's so fucking paranoid. So I will be thinking that you're out to get me, like if I'm walking around and you're looking at me or whatever. So then I'll go stand by you. I'll go get next to you and stand by you and to try to incite you. Because I figured, fuck, I don't want to sit here thinking this guy's out to get me. I'm just going to go inside him. Because if he is out to get me, then we just get this over with. And I can just get into, I can do whatever I want, right? Yeah. And one time I'm at this show and I'm totally fucking freaking out. And my buddy goes, you're psychotic. He keeps telling me this, right? I go, that guy's fucking staring at me, man. And I'm in the audience, like wandering around, right? I go, that guy's fucking staring at me. Look, at he's fucking looking at me right now. He's fucking staring at me. And my buddy goes, he paid to see you. He paid to see you. Just, you know. He's paying your bill, dude. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, the guy paid to see me, and, and I'm freaked out that he's looking at me. Like, don't don't look at me. Yeah, I mean, some yeah. people might be a fan, right? They might be well, like, that's what it, that's my buddy that saying. It's like, hey, he paid to see you, guy. <laughs> yeah. And I thought he, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's a trip. Yeah. Going from being loaded one day to then being sober and having to deal with life, like on life's terms, as they say, it's tricky huh yeah for the first time i'm a baby like it took me a long time like they talk about like emotionally sober emotionally sober i i used to boil these questions down like they have these questions on whether you're not you're an alcoholic or not but they're all to do with the drinking like the drinking like you know they say well do you crave a drink at the same time during the day do you do this does drinking you know affect your thinking blah blah so so but that's all with the booze in me with the booze in me with the booze in me right and then there's questions about well how do you feel when you're not sedated now how do you feel 
And I had boiled all those questions down to two simple questions. And it was, how do you react to the word no or the statement you're going to have to wait? And <laughs> That's I, kind of an interesting. Yeah, well. because I could not. I did not like it when somebody told me no. And I did not like it when somebody told me that I would have to wait. Sounds like a it, child. It was yes, 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 and <laughs> instant gratification. Yeah. And the other part of being a child was, uh, you know, with a baby, if I put a rattle like this in front of a baby's face and I shake it, the child, the baby understands the rattle is there. When this is moved, the rattle ceases to exist. And I was so underdeveloped emotionally that I had a girlfriend if I saw her. And if I didn't see her, she no longer existed. I was no longer married. I was no longer, you know, whatever the hell it was. It was just strictly that emotionally this fucking needy little child baby. Mm -hmm. And and I noticed it like when I was so when I was a kid also, when I was a baby also, and I got upset, it was I wanted either two things. I wanted the bottle or the tit. And then I realized now I'm a grown man, and when I get upset, I want two things, the bottle or the tit. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing had changed. Nothing changed. So. Nothing, yeah. How about now? Do you think you're more mature now? Yeah, I can listen to an opposing viewpoint without putting hands on somebody. That's You know, I, I love hearing these guys. Huge growth. Very, very great growth. That's yeah. a concept that wasn't even within. Like, <laughs> like sometimes they talk about, I'll hear people say, whoever they are, whoever they are, they'll say, uh, you know, a life beyond your wildest dreams. A life beyond your wildest dreams. Okay, well, what does that mean? What does it even mean, you know? If I say all oh, my wildest dreams are to own an island and have a boat and sit on an island and be there, just Robinson Crusoe all by myself, flying in there, dropping fucking staples, whatever the hell it is, that's my wildest dream. Okay, well, let's go beyond that. Let's go beyond the thought of your wildest dream. Now... When do the thing is, how would you like to be able to react to the word no in a calm manner? That's beyond your wildest dream. How about if you had faith in something beyond yourself? What if you are willing to share people, give of yourself? So we're going beyond the, the wildest dreams of island bullshit. Now we're moving into how would you be able to, how would you like to be able to sit and wait and just wait and be okay and calm? Those are beyond your wildest dreams. Those are things that people never even think about. They think about their wildest dreams, but we go beyond that into the realm of how about, how would you like to listen to an opposing viewpoint and not take it personally? How would you like to entertain an opposing viewpoint and see where this person might be right? Willing to be changed by what they say. These are things beyond people's wildest dreams. They're things that people don't even think about. Yeah. Especially people like me. Because anything that used to oppose me, I would put hands on people for it. Yeah, sounds like huge growth. Yeah, or or to to uh, crave critique is something else. That was something I couldn't stand. And now, you know, good positive critique, I fucking hunger for it. Ask for it all the time. Yeah. So, and that's beyond anything I would have. Like, if I would have made a list of what I wanted, that shit wasn't on it. I like the bugs. Yeah. 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 When the I bugs get hungry, are good. I just yes. kind of eat them like beetles. Well, juice. it's funny because I wasn't, I can't, I, <laughs> I can't see very good. And so I got a donut out of the, out of the, out of the, how I was talking to my daughter, right? And she's watching me and I get this donut out of the cupboard and I take a bite of this donut. I'm like, what the fuck, man? And it was all like peppery. Like it was like pepper. And my kids started laughing and she goes, I can't believe you fucking bit that. I go, what are you talking about? She goes, it's covered in ants. And the donut was covered in ants, but I couldn't see the ants all over it because, I, could, you know, my eyes were blurry. I couldn't see good. And so I had took this big bite of donut, and it was covered with black ants. There were ants all over the fucking donut. So now I know when people say, I have eaten ants before, I always say, well, what do they taste like? Because now I can, I can say they're they peppery. Taste like pepper. They taste like pepper. <laughs> taste wow. like straight pepper. Ants taste like pepper. That's interesting. So now if anybody's watching this <laughs> and they've actually eaten ants, they will know a non-anteater will have no idea what I'm talking about. Validated. But an anteater will go, he's right. <laughs> he's right. And if he's right about that, he's probably right about something else. It's true. Which brings me to the Weekly World News. If we <laughs> want to slide that in there. If you ever seen that magazine, the Weekly World News, I fucking loved it. Bat Boy and all this weird shit going on in there. Right. Weekly World News. Great. Okay. So... Inside that newspaper, there was an article 
about a snake that ate a boy. Like it ate a boy. And it was in Lakewood, California. Well, that's a true story. That kid fell asleep. The dad had a python and the python swallowed the kid's leg. They ba- the kid was sleeping. The dad was asleep. The python got out and ate the kid's leg, was going up the leg with the kid. And he had the kid's leg in its mouth when the dad woke up. And, and so I thought, okay, Weekly World News loaded with aliens, bad boy, all this shit. But that story's true. So if one story in there is true, what else is in there true? Something to think about. <laughs> Definitely. So, I mean, if you have time to think about <laughs> shit like that. Some people don't got Maybe time later. to think about shit like that. <laughs> Maybe if I'm lucky. So 78 to 89 must have been rough. No. No? No, it was good. It was what? good. Shit didn't get bad for me until 84. Like, things were work and I was having fun. Like, real periodic, on and off. But but what was going on was just complete craziness. Because I did whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. There was no fucking governor on me. You know, it's like when you get in those little... The cars at Disneyland, the fucking Utopia or whatever, the cars over there. And they, they only go so fast. There's a governor on it. It only goes so fast. Well, I had no governor. There was nothing that I used to tell... There is nothing in me... Thought, action. Thought, action. They were, they were simultaneous. Thought and action went together. There was no thought. Hey, is that the right thing to do? Okay, let's do it. Thought, is that the right thing to do? Oh, no, let's not do that. You know, and to me, it was just thought, bam. Like I'm, I'm walking through Bob's Big Boy one night. I had dinner and I just had the thought and I just belly flopped right on this table of people's food. Just bam, just up and just went belly flopped on the table and just insanity um, craziness but there was no thought about it. it was like i'm just walking and thought oh wow i could belly flop on that table and i just did did you get cut was there glass no i did not get cut i didn't get injured in any way it was complete people are screaming totally total bedlam it was a family you know all of a sudden just wow. just on the table and anyway so <laughs> okay. but the issue is so back then there's no governor on me i'm oh. doing whatever the hell i feel like it and, and then the drinking and stuff started later as that world I created began to fall apart. Wow. How did you end up in the music scene? How, I mean, where did it start? Where accident. It was an accident. Total accident. I can't sing. And why I, punk rock? Yeah. I mean, was Listen, it just a good I, fit for you? or Punk rock was created for me. Punk rock so was like, created. It's a good place for me to go. <laughs> Great. Punk rock was created by whatever demon god might be out there. Because because someone like me is not getting in a rock band. I can't sing. I, I mean, I can I can put a melody together. I can do whatever. But I don't got a good voice. Nobody's going to sit there and, and go, what a great singer that is. You know, I'm a good performer. I'm good at performing. I'm not a good singer. And so I would have never shown up. I'm not going to get in a band like Journey or fucking Ambrosia or some shit, whatever was going on in the 70s, what, Foreigner? You know, yeah. it feels like the first time. That's not coming out of me, man. Yeah, of course. And uh, so then all of a sudden, here comes punk rock, and I don't got to sing. I just scream. I can yell, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and, you know, give us free cheese, whatever the fuck there is. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's how I got into music, because it was punk rock. You didn't have to be good. You didn't have to be a player. It's actually, I I remember the rock guys getting so pissed off because uh, having a record back then was a huge deal. Oh, we're cutting a record. We're cutting an album. Like, like that was a big thing to rock guys back then. And uh, because it's not like today, you know, back then it's hard to cut a record, to actually do a record, find a record company that cares for you, blah, 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 the whole thing. And um, I remember we made our first record and these rock guys were just pissed at me. Because they they could play, and they played hard, and they were good, and they could sing good, and fucking rock, jam, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And here come these punks that are just, you know, putting together three chords and yelling, fuck the government, now we have a record out. And they were just, they were just <laughs> pissed off. I remember the guy, I remember standing in the liquor store listening to this dude just mad at me, mad at me, you know, and he was a little drunk. You know, kind of spouting off. He wouldn't have done it if he he wouldn't have spouted like that if he wasn't drunk. But he was like a little drunk, and I wasn't so mad at him. And he just kind of, 
you know, spouting some shit off about how we got a record out and all this crap. How did that first record do? Did great. Still this good. Still sells. Still yeah. sells. 1981 till now. That fucking record is still selling. And it caught, the guy spent $500 on making it. Probably one of the best investments he ever made on that record. You know, it just, and burned us, whatever. I, I don't care. I'm so over talking about that. But I just shot that T.S. Well movie, and I, yeah. I have spent two years listening to myself talk about this shit. So you're, you're tired of Over it. and over. Yeah, yeah. It, Let's it's, talk, you want to talk about the movie a little bit? How's it going? It's going good. That movie's going good. So I shot a T.S. Well movie. It's called Ignore Heroes, and I directed it and... Uh, you know, wrote some parts of it and directed it, and it's really uh it's a completely different documentary. I, I can't I like docs, but every doc looks alike. Every music doc looks alike. Every the angle, the way the cameras are shoot, everything looks alike. What goes okay, let's get young bands to say how cool this band is. Let's get old bands to say that they were important. Let's get movie stars to say how great they were. It's just the same. It's like a jerk-off festival, right? It's it's just like, yeah, no thanks. No thanks. And then no one in the band's really telling the story. They don't tell the story of the band. So so the way I did this doc is I didn't put anyone in the doc who wasn't with us. If you didn't interact with us, if you weren't in the vehicle, if you didn't pay us or book a show with us playing, you were not in that dock. So there's only like eight people in there, in that dock. And and then also, I tell the story. So, so it's, you know, I'm the front man given my opinion, my view of what was happening during those times, and it cuts into the other guys and there's animation and uh, so it's it's different. And and the thing about punk rock in the first place was you were supposed to push boundaries, push boundaries, push boundaries. You know, nowadays so much shit, it's just they fucking look alike, they sound alike. It's like it's a fucking bore. It's a bore. It's worse. It is worse than some of the rock shit we hated. It, it's like they, they have that look, the same look, the same that, the same sound. They're fucking talking about the same shit. Yeah, whatever. So... You know, making this doc, it's like, okay, I'm going to push boundaries. And people may not like it. They may not like it, but so what? They've never liked anything I've done. You know, they like it later, but a lot of times they don't like it when it first comes out. Because they don't know what it is. They don't know what they're listening to or looking at. Yeah, but as long as you like it, that's all that matters. That's right. right. <clears throat> and that's another thing, to stay true to yourself. That's true. It's so important. Yeah. And, and especially, I've been learning that a lot lately. Yeah, stay true. Because the bottom line is... I mean, think about it. Okay, I want you to do something. Now, you don't want to do it, but I'm paying for it. So you want me to do, you want, you're going to do it to go along and get that money. So you put yourself on the line, you go out there, you do it, and it fails. It fails. So you did what I wanted you to do, and it failed. Wouldn't you rather do what you want to do? Yeah, and, and maybe if it fails, then it fails, but it then was on your it. terms. It was by yourself, you know? It's like I would much rather do what I want to do than sell out, give up myself, and still fail. Yeah, it's better to take a chance on something you That's want. That's right. To. Fucking just take a hit. I agree. You know, and it's like big deal. So what? So it doesn't go well. So it doesn't. So people don't like it. Fucking dust yourself off. Do something else. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? Who Fuck cares? It. Because the last in the last, you're the one that's got to be satisfied. You got to sleep there with yourself. Uh, you know, I, I know. There's a joke. I'm I'm trying not to say that I used to say because I still say it and uh, I money doesn't doesn't sell me like I like money but I'm not willing to sell myself out for cash never happened not gonna happen right so so <laughs> this thing where it's like if I had a job if I had a job and all I had to do is every day walk out to the parking you know park the parking fucking way and pick up a $10,000 check and then walk back inside, I'd be cool for a week. And then I'd call up the company and say, hey, can't you guys just put that fucking check in the mailbox? It's like, I got to walk out to the parkway. There's due. I got to put my slippers on. Can you just put it in the fucking mailbox? <laughs> You're asking a lot of me. <laughs> right. So then they put it in the mailbox. And then I go a week later and say, can you just give me one check? One check for the, for the whole month so I don't got to cash this fucking daily check? And then two weeks later, I'd call up and say, hey, fuck you. Fuck you and fuck that job, because I I can't I I can't sell myself out. I I just can't. It's not worth it to me. I would rather make nothing doing what I want to do 
than than pay my bills doing what somebody else wants me to do, which I know is a very childish way to look at things. But no, but it's important. I think especially for an artist, because you'll get sick. It makes you feel sick if you feel like you're doing something that's not satisfying and it's but not fulfilling. To some people, yeah. To some people, but some <laughs> people know. Some people can do that. Yeah. Some people can well, just turn out shit. Right There's now. fucking a ton of Everywhere. them. Everywhere. I, I tell you, a ton of them. A ton of these fucking bands that just, they they purposely have a sound and a look and whatever, and they will continue that, and they will take it, and they will just fucking run it into the ground because they know that's what people want. That's what they want. They will give them what they want instead of what do what they want. So, whatever. I yeah, mean, we can... Gone. We, we don't have to listen to this bullshit, this fucking idealistic crap. I just spout it. <laughs> I think it's important. Do you remember your first show? Your yeah. first ever show? Um, how did it go? I think it was a party. Oh, a house party? It, it was a house party. I fucking love house parties. Aren't they great? I, I'm, yeah. It's, it's, That's as far I, as I made it in my band. Well, we played one show. And fuck, that. who would want to play a show? <laughs> it's like house parties are this shit. Yeah, they were I, good. I still had, for so long, I just had that high school... Uh, there's kegs and fights. There's, there's fucking kegs. The fam, there, There's always a bar. I cover this in the <laughs> TSOL movie about house parties, how I would only just play house parties. Because they got a bar. They got a bar. The parents have booze, so there's always booze there. You just come in, you set the gear up in the living room, and there's just fucking and fighting and drinking and craziness. And it was just a blast. I fucking loved it. I would just stay in my neighborhood always. You know, people go, what about going to L.A.? Fuck L.A. I'm staying here. Staying in Long Beach, man. There's a fucking great party. You know, there's a nooner down at Christie's. (laughs) There's a... There's a whatever I remember. Okay, so so, so here's it. So a, a nooner. That's what they call the nooner. So I'm I'm in high school one time and I I got you know I don't look as nice now, but uh, but I used to have this total girlish look. Like I look like a little girl. Like people must up until seventh grade, I had long hair and and people would always think I was a girl. They would always mistake me as a little girl. Right? We got this innocent angelic look on my face right so so my buddy mark he'd been smoking angel dust that's when a lot of people used to smoke dust a lot and uh so he was all dusted out and he and i are sitting in front of this house talking and it's a nooner during a school day and so so it's a house and the way this these houses are in this track is the front of the house is all the way up almost to the sidewalk just a driveway and then you go through a gate cross the lawn, and then the house is in the back, back here, right? So the police pull up, and they pull up on this house, and they're like, what are you kids doing out here? To me and Mark, and Mark's on dust, so he's just kind of like this, just this fucking staring at him. I go, I go, I was just telling my buddy to leave. I go, we got to leave, we got to get back to school. I go, I'm just trying to tell him, I know we got to get back to school right when you guys pulled up. And they look at me, and I look cute and innocent, and they go, that's a good idea, son. Why don't you beat feet? And I go, thanks, officer. And they go and walk into this house. And and so they walk through the gate, they walk into this house, and then I picked up this rock that was in the on the lawn, like an or- ornamental boulder. I just picked it up and just took it, just took the fucking front windshield out of the police car. Fucking <laughs> just bashed, bashed the window out, and then I took off fucking running, and they come back tearing out, and there's my buddy on dust just standing there going like this, looking at the fucking thing. And so they think he broke the window out, and they just beat the shit out of him. And uh, I went back to school. So Nice. Is Where it? is that friend now? <laughs> He's probably dead. <laughs> He's probably fucking dead. And he wasn't even mad at me. But, but the cops thought I was so innocent looking. You know, it's like it couldn't have been that kid. It's like, you know, it's this one. It's this fucking angel dust smoking kid. <laughs> That's back when the cops used to kick your ass and then just let you go. They did, yeah. They and uh, you know what's funny? I, I especially I it's better that way sometimes, huh? Yeah, you take a little licking. You just take a licking. I see. I don't understand a lot of this stuff. It wasn't about, you know. I'm not saying there weren't, aren't, or weren't, or you know, racist police and police brutality and all that. But they were crying about that back then too. But there was a. It wasn't a color violation. Especially, I grew up in Long Beach. What's a color violation? White, black, brown, whatever the fuck color you are, wherever you're from, Asian, wherever you're from, it was known. You swing on a cop, you're going to get a beating. You run from a cop, 
you're going to get a beating. That's just the way it was, man. It wasn't a race motivated thing. It's like, hey, you ran, you get your ass kicked. So I never had a problem with that. I can't do that anymore. What? Beat people's ass. No, you can run now. They they won't beat you up now. Yeah, they let you run. Yeah, they let you run. They got you you on body cameras. Citizen, citizen. (laughs) You can do anything now. I wish. I remember this one night these cops picked me up. I had resisted arrest and... uh, Anyway, they got they ended up getting me and they put me in the car and they were pissed. Like when they got me, they were pissed. And it was Costa Mesa PD. And I had a skirt on and just, you know, just looked like a fucking maniac. And uh, a skirt. Yeah, I had like a it was like a it was like a skirt. And I had a hat with a hammer and sickle on it. And just it was fucked. You know, just looking like whatever. And uh Anyway, they got me in the car and they they pulled over on the way to the Costa Mesa police station and they pulled over and like where this field is or whatever. They said, go on, get out, get out. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And they had me in the front seat and the guys fucking hit me with a nightstick in the back of the head, like popping me in the head with it, saying, get out, get out. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And uh, they ended up taking me to the station. But, uh, you know, you don't see that as much these days. No, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> no, not anymore. You don't see as many people in the car at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the cars just, are empty. Now. Right, nostalgia. Yeah, it's a lot different now. Yeah. So what's Jack up to nowadays? Writing. We're always writing. Yeah, I've been writing lately. I love, I love writing. I, I've got probably fifty books on my computer, ready to go. I, I just get the basic idea for them and then put them out, and I just work on them in my head, and uh, so. So, and movies. I've been really getting into the movies. I shot my first short. Uh, it's called 288. I used to make films when I was a kid. And then I stopped. I just fucking, for some reason, just stopped making films. Just stopped. And uh, so I shot this short on child abuse. It's like a kind of an, it's not a documentary, but it's done like a documentary. And it's about child abuse, uh, sexual abuse, and uh, called 288 which is the California penal code for lewd and lavicious conduct with a minor. And uh, so I shot that and then I directed the ignore heroes, the TS well film. And now I'm in the middle. I, I just wrote a script. I'm getting ready to start directing another film. And while that's going on, I'm also writing and, you know, new music. It's like, I like to keep working like, fuck these guys. It's like, I think all the time, you know, you're, you're living off something you did 40 fucking years ago, guy. What have you done lately? Show me what you've done lately. You know, you're still playing these fucking songs from 40 years ago, and you're not you're not adding new songs in. You're not doing this. You got this look. You know, it's like fuck. What 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 lately, man? What have you done lately? Show me. When's the TSOL film come out? Well, we had the uh, we had the premiere, that which was great. Two sold out shows at the premiere, and then it's supposed to come out um, end of July, first of August. It'll be out on MVD uh, distributor, and it'll be DVD and streaming, and it'll be on on demand on TV, and you know, so you can watch it, you can do whatever, and uh, you know, and then and then I'll get ready and I'll shoot another film. I'm getting ready to shoot this other film, which is a drama. It's like a you know, it's like a drama, so dark comedy drama, whatever. And then music, you're working on new music. I'm always I think about it. I think, like I said, I'm not a fucking great singer, man. And some of the shit, like... some Comes to you in the shower? Just yeah. kind of... <laughs> <laughs> no, I start thinking about something. I think, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'd like to try something like that or do something, whatever. I don't know what's going to happen. It, I like making music. I like doing it. And, um, but, uh, but I'm not driven to do it. The film, I'm really driven to do film right now. And do a little, you know, do a little... Why not do a score for one of your movies? Yeah, I, I, I'm not. Or you can't go that far, huh? I mean, I could go that far, but I'm probably not going to do that. And then a, a little kind of a, a podcast show I'm going to do just to visit with people. That's also going to be fun. Let's talk about that. I'd love to talk about it. Go ahead, tell me about it. Well, should I? T- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me. About I, it. Well, tell me about your vision for that. What do you? Th- how do you think it would well, go? Well, it made me think. The the one thing about it is, I, first of all, where, where did podcasts come from? What is that? What's a podcast? It's just people having... Con- you want to know something that I don't listen to podcasts? I know, but what is I it? Tell you, it's just a couple of people having a conversation. But where did the word pod come from? I have no idea. From I don't being, either. From being in a pod and turning a 
audio on? Yeah, I I'm know. sure one of the guys know. You guys know? Fucking nobody but knows. It's I like a to, Star Wars <clears throat> thing. I, I don't even know what it is. You want to know what I learned? Racing I tell people this about podcasts all the time. I, I, I think they're great. I love podcasts, but I think there's a ton of shit in them. There's like four diamonds and then an hour of a pile of shit. Huh. Not always, but a lot of times. Yes. So I like when people pluck the diamonds out, put them all together, and stick them on YouTube. I like that a little better. That's fun. Because it's like, like the fast track to get to the diamonds. Right, right. Now, podcasts have diamonds in them, but you have to sit through a lot of stuff. Yeah, see, I like, like that. We're talking shit now, too. I mean, we're guilty of it. We're doing it right now, but... No, everything we have talked about has been good. You can take a <laughs> clip out of every one of these. <laughs> you probably can. <laughs> but I, I just... take a lot of so clips. I just, so I just think it's interesting, so maybe we should dig into that. Threads. It's like... Yeah, threads. There you go. You can take threads off of all sorts of these. So staying true to yourself. Let's dig into that. True to yourself. Let's just say in a hypothetical world, Jack had a podcast, video cast, whatever. Someone stuck a camera on you and you were steering the ship with respect to a version of a podcast of yours. Let's hear about it. That's funny that you say steering the ship because that supposedly, according to Tolstoy, that the uh, the captain... In, in alcoholism or whatever, that yeah. the captain has lost control of the ship. That yeah. the captain's one way and the ship's going another, and that meld of the two back together is a, that spiritual connection uh, to get the captain and the ship heading the same way. Anyway, some of that shit I just don't give a fuck about. It's like guys have told me before, they said, well, you should do a podcast. About what? About what? I don't fucking care. It's like, I, I, I don't really give a shit about your band. Now, I'm interested in the people. I like the people. I And 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 just because somebody's music's great, big fucking deal. They're fucking cocksuckers. I know some real fucking assholes whose bands are great. Can you but tell the guy, us about No, them? I cannot. I will not name them. Uh, <laughs> but go but, ahead. No, but, we all know, have. We all they, have. Yeah, they rave about these guys. Fuck that guy. I don't give a fuck how good that song is. He's a fucking asshole. He's a fucking racist. He's a fucking homophobe. Whatever the fuck it is. And I'm guilty because I've been a prick. And I know that people have said, yeah, fuck that band. That guy's an asshole. I get it. You know, and that's why I've spent the last 34 years trying to clean up my wreckage. And, uh, but, but do a podcast about what? Do I really care? Not really. Can I stay focused? Not really. You know, so, uh, so really... You know, I thought, well, well, what do I like? I, I like talking to my girlfriend. I like talking to her. I like having people come and visit. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do a show, and I'm going to have my girlfriend sit there with me because she's legit. My girlfriend's legit. She's like a therapist, clinical social work, master's from USC. Like, she's fucking working on a doctorate. This bitch is legit. Now, I'm out of control. I'm fucking crazy. And, and it's good having somebody like that that kind of keeps me in line yeah, a so little bit. Yeah, there's a balance there. Yes. So you I'm bipolar unmedicated. So, <laughs> so and, and and I remember one time I so was... So you'll, you'll, bring, you'll bring some guests in yeah. and you'll have her there, which sort of balances That's out. Right. The, yeah, That's okay. right. That's right. And because sometimes, you know, I can lose it. So it's also nice having somebody like that telling me to, you know, just, just calming me down a little bit. And... Uh, you know, the funny thing about about my girl is, uh, so I'm freaking out one day. There's always something going on at the house. There's, I'm suicidal. I'm fucking something. There's whatever. The house is torn apart. I'm speaking in different voices. Whatever the fuck is going on okay. in that house <laughs> during the daytime. Speaking in different voices. Well, whatever. I'm talking to myself using different voices. And sometimes I'll get and I'll, I'll say the part on the phone. Like, I'll, I'll play my part with the proper pauses, and then I'll get on the other phone and play the other part with those pauses, and then another piece with those pauses, and then I will also jump in, and I'll have a four-way conversation with myself. It, it's the same as, like, if you use GarageBand to put a band together. I just put four people talking to each other, but they're all me. So anyway, so, uh, so I'm fucking losing it one day, just going fucking nuts. And my chick comes over and she like opens the door and looks in and says, what's going on in here? I go, I go, no one likes this. And I'm fucking freaking out. And I'm just saying, no one likes this. No one likes this. And she says, I like it. I like it because I never know who's going to open the door when I come over here. You know, so, uh, so it's nice to have somebody that understands that, uh, that madness. And also just being able to have a podcast where it's just, I'm just myself. 
just talking about whatever I feel like talking about or doing or whatever. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe some people can call in. Maybe somebody calls in. I like visitors. I like people calling in. Uh, anyway, like somebody said that I was the Huell Hauser of punk rock. I like visiting. <laughs> like walk going around visiting. Yeah, so we just need to stick a camera on your ass, basically. Yeah, whatever. People come through, and I'm sure you have some people that come to mind that you'd like to chat with. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we'll see what happens. I, I think just... Uh, yeah, so stay tuned, everyone. Yeah. There might be something coming up. <laughs> well, people like watching the video posts, and it's funny. They do like watching me. So I'll be online doing video posts or whatever. videos are. Yeah, and people like to watch them. People that know, they like to watch them. And, uh, but they really like it, like when my daughter's on or when my girlfriend's on with me, and they'll, they'll send messages to her. Like, oh, don't listen to him, Jennifer. He's a child. No, they'll be, the comments will be <laughs> popping up. You know, it's like, leave her alone. She's beautiful, you know, or or whatever. But they're interested, though. They're interested, right. Cause that's it's because fun. nobody wants to watch someone that's bone dry. That's not fun. No. Somebody wants to watch someone that's fucked up because right. it's interesting. And and the other that's thing is. That's why reality TV is so effective. But it's not always fucked up. Yeah. See, at that thing, you talk about picking out diamonds. So yeah, there's rambling, rambling, rambling. But within the rambling, every once in a while, it's there's like diamonds. Oh, oh, that's a legitimate statement. Yeah, because, I never thought of that before. because it's human. Right. You know, people people connect with things that they see are human. You're a human. You're a person. And so when they see you being authentic to yourself, it res resonates with them. Right. Like with all of us, I think. You get what you're gonna get from me. Yeah. That's it. You know, that's I'm not gonna blow smoke up anybody's ass. Or I might blow smoke up somebody's ass if I feel like blowing smoke up people's asses. <laughs> but, but it'd be uh, real smoke, though. <laughs> yeah. No, but somebody said, you know, some this guy in England made a comment. He said, yeah, it's just Jack taking the piss out of people. He loves doing that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. Fucking with people. Having fun. I like fucking with people. I like talking to people, too. Fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. Yeah. It's I like knowing why. That's always, ever since I was a little kid, that's been the thing. I want to know why. Like, why'd she kill herself? Why'd your wife leave you? Like, I like to know, like, what people are doing. Like, what's the move? What was the thought behind that action? Yeah, it's kind what of... What are you thinking, man? And sometimes it's nothing. I remember that was the standard question. There were two questions that were always asked to me since I was a kid. What the fuck were you thinking? That's one. What the fuck were you thinking? Sometimes the fuck was in there. Sometimes the fuck wasn't in there. And a lot of times my answer was, I wasn't. I was just acting. I wasn't thinking whatsoever. I'm just acting. And the other thing they always ask me is, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? And, uh, <laughs> you know, and a lot of people understand. <laughs> yeah, and then the other cool thing is, you know, there's a lot of people that, uh, that follow me or listen or watch or whatever, and they identify with the depression, the melancholia. They, they... They identify with that, 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 you know, madness or whatever. And that's the other good thing about having my girlfriend there because she's a, you know, she's a therapist. She's a clinical licensed social worker, whatever. And if somebody has an issue, maybe, maybe she might be able to discuss it. Yeah, we might have to bring her in and see how it goes. Yeah. She has diagnosed me numerous times. And? And I'm not a uh, sociopath. Oh. I got that going for that me. I've been accused of that. Nor am I a narcissist. You're not a narcissist. Not a narcissist. I might have some narcissistic tendencies, but uh, not a sociopath, psychopath, or a narcissist. That's good. Just basically general anxiety disorder, little ADHD, bipolar. Know, just, the <laughs> just the basics. Just the basics. Basics. Nothing that narcissism exciting. is pretty popular now. I hear people are kicking that around a lot. Too much. Oh, he's a narcissist. She's a narcissist. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, fuck it's you. It's pretty popular. They don't gaslighting. Really they, I'm glad they, they let go of the gaslighting. Although my girlfriend did say I was gaslighting her the other day. But, uh, you know, <laughs> fuck it. Yeah, that one's kicked around too loose, I think. Everybody is a narcissist now. But they're really not. They're not. It's just the easy word to use. Right. It sounds people, good. People want to label you and box you in, you know? Right. It sounds good. I'm not really bipolar either. Yeah. I mean, that's been tossed around. That's been bandied about in my Yeah, that one hemisphere. was popular for a while. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that one kicked around a lot, too. Right. People don't really fucking know. And everyone's got something. Everyone, Everybody's got something. They really do. Yeah. It's the ones that are buttoned up the most that you really got to watch out well, for. Well, and that's what I always tell people. I, I say, look, when I wander in somewhere, 
If you see me coming in in a nice suit and a tie and my hair's nice and done and I'm all put together, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. The minute you see me walking in like that, split. Because that means I am at the end of my rope. That means that they're, they're, everything that I try to control in this world, everything that I try to hang on to and control and force, whatever, all of it has failed me. And the only thing left is trying to get myself tight. Get this tight. Get my clothes tight. This, when I walk in like this, I'm in a sweatsuit, my hair's fucked up, whatever, great. You know, business as usual. But if I come in cleaned up, realize that that was the last thing. I am on the final edge. That is it. I am one step away from fucking just opening fire. <laughs> so. Yeah. Sometimes you got to watch out for the people that are in the suits and polished. Yeah. Sometimes without the a, worst ones. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Not a problem. Not a thing. Everything's good. Everything's okay. Everything's good. Everything's okay. Everything's good. Everything's okay. <laughs> but it's really not. Right. Right. <laughs> Everything's not okay for everybody.